Good morning, Cowboy Jim. Um, I should almost clear my throat a little before I start these videos, but hey, I don't want to fall into that thing where, as a person who is not as young as I once was, is actually talking to myself. And, uh, and anyway, so uh, I just do what I do and uh, put my hand on my Bible, don't absorb much from it, but it is a comfort to me. And um, I, um, I do hope that uh, you are keeping well and uh, that life is living up to your uh, expectations, your hopes, your dreams, your schemes, all those things. Uh, I, um, I sat down, uh, I said to the Lord, I said, uh, uh, I'd like to do one video today as I have to go back to work tonight. And it's not a case of have to go back to work. Oh, dear Lord. It's not that. Um, I look forward to work. I, I anticipate uh, God's blessing. I look forward to the opportunity of watching people and anyone that's sitting off by themselves uh, out in the smoke pit. I smoke, okay, okay. And uh, I'll walk over to them and ask them how they're doing and uh, spend a little bit of time and try to build them up and encourage them. And uh, that's what I do. It's my choice. And, um, but today is the day of my birth. And I am as hard as it is to believe for me. I am 74 blessed years old. And life has been referred to as a race, uh, not against time, but in, perhaps in some ways it is, uh, a race to determine how much living we can jam into this life that God has given us. And, and uh, so my desire is uh, to look to the Lord and to live my life to the maximum and to honor God and to care for people who are round about me. And so I do try uh, with my whole heart. And, um, and I enjoy uh, myself to the full. And of course, I, I live alone. I kind of look around at this little tiny apartment and my ranch, uh, at the ranch, my house was 5,000 square feet and a three car heated garage and my cabinet shop was so big and uh, you could work in there at minus 40 and uh, in shirt sleeves, it, it, it was so warm. I had built the whole thing myself with the helper and all that stuff. And uh, I, I look at my present situation and I think, you know, uh, I used to rent apartments that were uh, half again as big as, uh, as this little tiny basement apartment in Fort Mac and, and uh, and when I built the house, uh, I, I built it so that I had three apartments uh, that were, um, I'm looking up, I'm seeing one light that has not decided to work yet. Hey, work once. And uh, I don't know how to change the bulb because they're a weird looking light. And I, I just don't quite understand how in the world do I get the, the little light extricated from the whatever. Uh, fixture. So, ah, thank you for allowing me the privilege and the honor of sitting here at 74 years of age and having lived uh, two or three lifetimes jammed into one. And 
I think back to the the number of times I've been on the operating table because gravity and we Irish, we don't get along. Uh, I, I think about the mountain lion that attacked uh, my cousin and I, and I thought, you know, it's going to plant its feet and uh, before it makes the final jump to kill us. And uh, I waited and I put an arrow in its chest. And my cousin, he, uh, John Martin, uh, I interviewed him this summer. Uh, in his video is called uh, John Martin and the Mountain Lion and uh, his recollection is so different than mine and uh, but that's the way it is you take two people they watch a calamitous event and they have two separate stories because it's their stories and uh, I have so enjoyed my life it's been such a pleasure, such a joy. I remember a, a few years back, I was working for a company that they ended up, they didn't want me around. And, uh, and, and, and it was because I let a man beat me uh, in their company laid down, all oh, the lights turned on. And, uh, and uh, I, I let him beat me and I, I could have reached out and touched him and and introduced him to the Creator just with one or two quick moves of my hands because I was taught how to kill with my hands by my judo instructor. When uh, I was 12, I'd been taking judo for a couple of years and playing hockey as well, And uh, but I, I preferred judo uh, because it was a one-on-one -on -one or on occasion the numbers got uh, a little bigger and uh, but I still the one who was standing with God at my back and uh, and you know I remember that night uh, I, I'm tempted to say the company's name but they behave so badly I won't and uh, I won't but the temptation is there really there and uh, I had gone out to the smoke pit, as I'm inclined to do before uh, the safety type meetings and so on like that. And, and um, when I walked in, there were upwards of 70 people in the room. I walked through the door and they began to sing happy birthday to me. And I stood there and I thought, you know, um, this is an honor for me. And then I remembered the night little Maggie uh, was being uh, terrorized by a big woman. And uh, there were 60 or 70 of us in the room. And I remember that night with a clarity that is only from God. And uh, Maggie was standing her ground and this big woman, brute she was, and... Uh, she was just reffing and tearing and condemning and all those things. She was fulfilling the complete criteria of what Satan does to people to rob, steal, and destroy their joy, wherein the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I remember that night, and uh, there, no one was standing up for Maggie, and so I just headed across the room and that big woman, she saw me coming and everyone in the room were just staring to see what the old rancher uh, was going to do. And that, that big girl, she just, she just turned on her heel and strode into the women's change room and little Maggie, she just hit the ground and she just literally collapsed. And she was sitting, uh, in the main room, main hall, where we did our safety uh, meetings, and she she was weeping. I walked over to her, got down on my knee. I only have one that really works any good anymore, and uh, I, I just have lived a rough life, and I mean rough, and uh, I put my arm around her. I said, Maggie girl, I said, uh, can I pray for you? And uh, my heart is touched. Uh, Maggie said, Jim, Jim, 
Jim, please pray for me. Please pray for me. And uh, so I, I had my hat off and I put my arm around her and asked God to build her up and asked God to touch her heart. And, and God and I, we had a time um, of tears in my eyes. And uh, when I was done praying, Maggie said, Jim, thank you. Thank you so much for praying for me. And uh, I was in no trouble, and I kind of helped her get up so she could kind of carry on the night shift and, and uh, do the safety meeting and all those things. And I think, you know, when you try as hard as I try uh, to honor God and to care for people, and to try to build the people up, oh crap. And, uh, but I do. And, uh, uh, sorry. I, uh, I'm pretty rogue today. And, uh, used to tell people, you know, I've been shot out in the head, and uh, I'd been drugged and beaten in the head. But I, I, I wear my heart on my sleeve because God has taught me to care uh, one for another. And I choose to do that. That's, that's what I choose. And, uh, and so that's what I do. And I remember so many things from my lifetime. Uh, back when I was maybe three, might have been five, I, I thought there were only two entities in the world who loved me. One was God and the other was my mother. And uh, I did a video the other day, a tribute to my mother. And uh, all my YouTube videos are a tribute to God and to God's love. Not religion, but God's love. And uh, I have had a time of it. I have, well, there was a time back when we first built the ranch and we, we got her all done and got all the apartments set up so that they'd pay for the ranch. And, and uh, ex-wife and I, we were kind of kind of growing apart. Uh, she uh, had the belief system that her children were far more important to her than I was. And that was kind of self-explanatory. Uh, she killed my horse. Well, you want finality in a, a divorce, well, that'll give it to you. Kind of hard on the horse. And uh, I, I remember uh, so much of what I've tried to do and, and failed um, quite miserably at. And, I, I have studied my heart, my my spirit, and uh, my life, and I I I say a simple thing. Uh, when I did number seven hundred uh, video, number seven hundred, I I said of one statement to make: to God be the glory, great things He hath done, and He has. I mean, I've lived through some stuff that that no one should have lived through. Um, God told me just wing it and speak from the heart. And I've had 15 surgeries that required anesthetic. Uh, I, I have lived my life and I've tried to live it in honor of God and I stumbled on alcohol uh, a little bit while I was going through that last divorce and and uh, I'm kind of glad that God got me through that and uh, I've never felt sorry for myself uh, naughty of her and uh, recently I uh, I thought I'm, I'm going to check my credit rating and see if uh, I miss not having a ranch uh, I, I will never have a ranch as big as that one uh, not in size land wise, but in uh, we heated 12,000 square foot of floor space uh, on the ranch. And uh, 
I won't ever have another one like that. But anyways, I sat down uh, with the banker and, and uh, uh, we ran a credit check and see how I'd recovered the last two, three years. And dear Lord God in heaven, uh, I qualify to buy a little tiny ranch somewhere and that'll do for me. I just I just need a front porch uh, with uh, my heavy gun sitting next to me. I, I, I shoot a Mark V uh, Weatherby, 300 Weatherby Magnum. And, uh, and you know, to shoot a moose that would be walking by in the front yard, uh, I kind of look forward to that. I, I kind of look forward to what I used to do uh, every morning before the sun would come up, I'd, I'd go out and sit on the deck by myself. Well, I've always been by myself, no matter if I were in a crowded room. I, I never realized that until my elder son told me. And I realized, you know, it's the truth. Uh, uh, God and I, we have just had a time of living. And uh, so I've never been alone, but I've always been alone but God has always been there to build me up and encourage me and I remember sitting every morning uh, for a couple of years uh, out, out on the east end of the house is a big house 5,000 square foot and I, I would watch the sun uh, break over the the big hills to the east of of the ranch and I would watch the sun's progress as it marched forward to the summer of June 21st and all that, and when it marched back. And I would sit there and I'd pray for my family and uh, my ex my my whole family. And, and God and I, we, we had a regimen and I, I'd probably be praying for 50, 60 people uh, that they would find peace with God. and. I want you to know, um, I, I am on my next days off. I'm going to start looking for a little tiny, tiny ranch, about 160 acres if I can. Uh, hopefully, it'll almost all be bush and a little tiny house that uh, I can I can walk in and do my cooking and and uh, all that stuff. And I'll only be able to stay at the ranch. Uh, uh, every uh, second uh, seven day period because I, I will have to work uh, long, long, long and hard to pay the little ranch off and I won't buy any bigger than God can uh, enable me to handle but God says uh, uh, remember the scripture I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengtheneth me and I do And uh, but I'm still going to use some common sense and I'll, I'll try diligently to find a, a nice, uh, pleasant ranch. Uh, hopefully it'll have a view of the mountains and hopefully there may just be a stream running, running through it and uh, I, I'll be able to go down and cast a line and, uh, and uh, catch my own uh, dinner and that sort of thing. Well, children, uh, I am honored that you take the time to listen to the old rancher and I am so glad that we are living in what I know to be the end times. I, I started out believing in God about the time I come out of my mother's womb and uh, I didn't even know who he was. I didn't know that he existed except I knew that he did. I, I, I knew also that he loved me and my mom loved me. And I learned of him uh, all, all those years. And I've not always behaved well. I, I'm a fighter. I, uh, uh, I, I mean, well, I tell you, that's the way it is. Uh, but I also care for people. I, I pray for people. I remember one of my prayers that I had with God for many years was God let me live long enough to see the return of Jesus Christ to this earth and I watch the news and I watch the hatred uh, that the world has for Israel 
the anti-Semitism, the racism, I despise racism. Uh, my ancestors came from Ireland. We back in uh, 16th, 17th, 18th century, uh, the Irish were sold as slaves around the world. And that's the way it was. We were indentured to the English. And that meant we owed the money and that meant they, uh, they owned us. When you owe, uh, whoever you owe, they own you. You might think you're free, uh, but until you're out of debt, uh, you're not free. And uh, I always prayed, God, let me see Jesus Christ return. And we're so close now. Children, we are so close now uh, that I'm pretty sure that God's going to let me see that happen and uh, the return of Jesus to receive those who have chosen to believe in him, who have humbled themselves and said, God, forgive me. I accept that Jesus Christ is your son, that he did suffer, bleed, and die on the cross for my sins, for yours, if you so choose. And I always say, God, I am so sorry for having lived the way I have because I know how I've lived. Oh, dear Lord God in heaven, I know how I have lived, and I choose never to forget my behavior, whether it's good or real bad, as it has been on occasion. But God has forgiven me, and I, and I declare in that simple prayer, uh, God, help me to be what you want me to be. Well, you have the choice of choosing whether you wish to believe in God or no one, and you can choose your own eternity in heaven. God will only judge you for one thing, and that is this. What have you done with his son, with Jesus? And people are, are not saying, uh, we as created beings, we, we, we try to disseminate and understand what what it is God has said in his word, and I look affectionately over at my Bible, I don't have uh, a woman beside me, which is really too bad, but on the other side of the coin, I'd probably still be in bed, probably until I turned 80, and uh, I'm Irish, okay? And uh, sense of humor and I, we, uh, we kind of get along. Um, you and you alone have been given God's choice for you to choose to believe in him uh, and or not. And if you choose to believe in God and you humble and, and, uh, and humble yourself before him and pray a prayer similar to what I just prayed about God forgive me, uh, you will have your name written in the Lamb's book of life. And if you don't, well, it's your choice. I mean, hey, I don't judge anyone over anything. I, I take a long look at their their behavior, and as long as they don't come too close to me, uh, I, I just let them be. I don't tell people how to live. I don't tell people how to think either. I just encourage people to consider God loves you. Jesus suffered, bled, and died on the cross for you. The rest is up to you. There's a wonderful scripture. It's a terrible scripture, but it's wonderful too. It says, it is appointed unto each individual to work out their own salvation in fear and trembling. So today is the 21st of October, uh, 2023. I was born in 1949. And you know, this is number... 721 YouTube videos that God and I have done. And I know only God can do this sort of thing. I, I, I watch uh, Anthony Oliver, uh, and he, uh, he's, he's been on YouTube and everything else for a, a few months, and he has 84 million uh, views. Well, he's a wonderful character. I love his singing. My grandson's a country music recording artist, Cole Martin, from down in Innisfail. And you know, life has been good for me. I am at peace with God. 
uh, you say delusional, hey, hey, I wouldn't judge you, and uh, so don't judge me. But if you choose to and you have to, well, give her hell. I could care less because I know God loves me, and I know that God has given me a purpose and a joy. And I get ready to go back to work tonight, and I, I'm rather excited about it because there just might be someone standing off by themselves whose heart is broken. And I have a list in my heart of the people I pray for, and I do pray for them, and they know it because I told them. And uh, so here, uh, you are the only authority in your life that will determine where you spend eternity. You and you alone, God gave you that choice. You can choose to run this uh, race uh, that has been referred to in scripture. It's called your life. You can choose to honor God, uh, to care for people, and uh, or you can choose just to care for yourself. And uh, I'll never judge you. Uh, God won't judge you on that either. The only thing that God will ever judge you for is the answer to this question that only you can give. What have you done with the Son of the living God? That's all. So another three, four days, I'll be headed off near the mountains trying to find the cheapest piece of land that's available. And I don't care what it looks like. Oh, it'd be nice if it were backed up to uh, Crown Land, and it'd be nice if I could ride a horse. It'd be a black and white paint, I guarantee you that. And, uh, and, and ride out to the bottom of a mountain and to sit there on my horse and, and just thank God and look up at, at God's creation and, and honor Him. I pray that you honor God. I pray that your heart has been touched by what God has done in my life and in these YouTube videos. And I probably will be sitting there on one horse and, and I won't need a second horse because probably God's probably going to keep me uh, tuned into his will and word and I'll just keep making these YouTube videos and that's just the way it is. So God bless you. And I, I thank you for the honor and the privilege that you and God have uh, given to me uh, on my birthday to be able to sit here and say thank you. Thank you so much. Don't judge each other. Just consider when you look in the mirror uh, what you're looking at. Uh, you're not looking at God. You may be narcissistic, but you're not looking at God. Uh, you'll find God. Uh, when you humble yourself and pray on bended knee in your heart, your soul, your spirit, and say, God, forgive me. God bless you. God keep you. Thank you again. Thank you for the honor you have shown just in listening uh, about what God has done in my life. And I, I, I thank God. Uh, for, for giving me the privilege and the honor of accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I thank you. So I'm, I'm going to shut this off now. And God bless you. And God keep you. And you and you alone will determine where you spend eternity. I, I hope to see you up there. I'm going to hang around the front gate like my friend from Perth, Australia. He said, I'm going to hang out at the front gate. I said, why? He said, so I can give you a hug when you walk through the, the door, through the gate. I'd like to give you a hug when you pass from this life into eternity. I'd like to be standing there. I'm not in a big rush to get there. Uh, I jokingly told my son, my oldest boy, when he asked me, uh, how, how long are you going to work, Dad? And I said, well, I'm going to work till I'm 80, and then I'm going to start another family. Well, the poor guy nearly had a heart attack. Well, God bless you, and God keep you. And I hope you have enough guts and enough smarts to get to know God, because he's worth it. He is worthy. Okay. God bless you. 
God keep you. He is able and he is worthy of your love because God is love. Y'all take care now. Thank you.